Hey everybody, Miss Ladybug here. It's been a while, so I thought I would do an update as well as I just passed a significant anniversary. Um, October 10th marked seven years since my last benzodiazepine that was taken routinely for too many years. So, um, I missed the day because I'm recovering from um, colo colon resection surgery that I had October 3rd. So I was just barely a week out of surgery uh, when that anniversary came. And to be honest, I've just been focusing on resting, sleeping, and keeping my pain under control. So, um, but I did want to make a video because seven years a lot is different. All you have to do is go back and look at some of my earlier videos. I am much calmer. I am satisfied with life overall. I have daily practices that help me be able to be the best person that I want to be today. I still have some health issues. I can't blame any one particular thing. I've just had too much in life to be able to say this is from benzodiazepines and that is from uh, from opiates or from pharmaceuticals of any kind and that's from stress and that's from whatever, um, genetics, because I, I don't know. I do know that I continually improve. Which is saying something, because I'm 61. And a lot of people at my age are kind of starting to notice aches and pains and having maybe some health issues. But instead, I've had, I, I'm i dealing with a health issue that I've had since I was 17 years old. I have had problems with my colon since I was 17 years old. Did medications play a part? Probably. Diverticulitis. Definitely, your gut is affected by taking medications that have toxic side effects. Um, but also, I've had stress my entire life. I, I have complex PTSD, and it was undiagnosed, and, and so there was a lot of stress because my amygdala was in fight, flight, or freeze, or fawn mode for most of my life. I don't have that affecting me the way that it used to. I have learned and been taught and practiced skills that allow me when I am triggered to recover myself rather quickly anymore, rather than maybe days or weeks of being dysregulated from having a significant trigger. Today, I might be dysregulated for an hour or two, which is like your normal neurotypical person. Um, I don't like the word normal, but as a normal, a, a neurotypical person, when, when they're caught off guard and surprised, blindsided, whatever, something stressful happens, they react too. So that's kind of how I am is my body reacts to a stressor or a trigger, which is a stressor, but I'm able to, um, Think about it rather than just letting it take over and taking me back to the place where whatever trauma that happened at that particular time uh, has been activated. So I, I've worked at my recovery. It has not been a passive endeavor whatsoever. I have been in uh, therapy with the same therapist for over four years doing EMDR and brain spotting and processing a lot of things and 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 learning ways of handling life in a different way than I ever have before. Um, I have always been nutritionally sound, but I have even been more attentive to my diet. I have also been more attentive to my mindfulness of everything, my surroundings, being present in the day. Uh, learning to escape that ruminating, anxiety-provoking, uh, 
tape that played for years and years and years. I don't have those kind of things that are just constantly going through my head of everything that went wrong and everyone that hurt me and everyone that did everything wrong and everything that I did wrong and oh my gosh, what's next? I don't I don't have that anymore. I, I, I don't have that at all anymore. Sure, I sometimes recollect things from the past or 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 a conversation will bring up something of the past, but I'm able to have a much more uh, I just view it of this is who I am today and that's who I was then. Very different people. I am not who I was and I'm fine with that. Nothing stays the same and nothing changes if you stay the same. If you keep trying to stay the same, you're going to keep getting the same things in your life. You to, to, to get different things, you have to do different ways and some of my ways have been radical <laughs> to get a different result. Um, you know, becoming a nomad. That's a little radical, but I sure am loving it. I have no regrets of that. Um, you know, uh, jumping off meds, that was kind of radical. And, and it came with some consequences. I, I, I don't do things quite so rash anymore. I do think things through. But... Yeah, life's pretty good. Um, I am preparing to see a pain interventionist about some neuropathy that I have. Uh, for over 15 years, I was wrongly diagnosed again that I had had plantar fasciitis, and I have gone through multiple treatments for that, including physical therapy and different inserts and this and that. But I went to a podiatrist, and he said, you don't have plantar fasciitis at all. You have nerve damage from your S1, L5 compression and bulging disc. And since I had already have tried medications and medications don't work for me, um, and I've done physical therapy, then it's time to see what else is out there. And I don't know whether it'll be, oops, I don't know if it'll be something I'll actually do or not, but I am going to check on that. Um, I've just been trying to get some, some health things taken care of because I was so afraid, like many of you, for years to go to doctors. I was terrified. And yet here I am, seven years being off meds, and I just had major abdominal surgery. And I'm okay. I am okay. And I have had medications. Now, I also was very specific about what I could and could not have. And I was specific telling them what the reactions were. I said, don't give me benzos. I have horrible psychiatric reactions. I get terrible akathisia. I get very, very depressed. I get suicidal. Don't give them to me. And it's in my chart. I, I refuse that class of medications, all of them. Um, I, you know, and what's interesting is I, I have trialed a few things that, I had had troubles with before, like Vicodin. I used to take Vicodin. It would make me itch and so hyper. Well, I haven't had Vicodin for over seven years also, and it didn't didn't react that way at all. I started with a half of one, and it was when my diverticulitis, before my surgery, the pain was needing management, and I couldn't cover it enough with with the cannabis. And I have been using cannabis throughout all of this, throughout all my recovery. Cannabis has been my friend and has been a great assistance in getting me back to homeostasis, to get my system to homeostasis. It's, it has helped tremendously. Um, so yeah, you know, I've, I, um, medications will never be part of my routine life. Do I see allopathic medicine doctors? Yes, and I also see them knowing medications is what they're going to offer. That's what they're taught. If I wanted to learn about diet, I'm not going to go to an allopathic doctor or or a Western medicine dietitian for that matter. I probably would go to someone in Chinese medicine or someone in... Uh, you're some other realm, 
you know, someone, a naturopath, I would see someone besides, because I, I don't think that that's, Western medicine is really great for surgery. They're really great for that. They're really great if you have a heart attack They're really or, or a stroke. They, they're really beneficial. But the things to prevent the heart attack, the things to prevent the stroke, even the stuff to prevent the diverticulitis, they're not so great at. They just aren't. And it's not their responsibility either. It's, it's our responsibility. We go to them and they give us the information they know. That's what they, that's what they give us. It's what they know, what they've been taught. And, and you have to recognize when you go to allopathic Western medicine, they all pretty much come from the same schools with the same education and the same philosophies. And it is pushed by big pharma and by the insurance companies. And that's just, that's what it is. And so I don't go to them with obscure, weird things and go, please fix this. Cause I know they're going to give me medication for it. I just know that's how it's going to be. So I, I've looked at other avenues for getting answers and, you know, trying different diets, trying different sleeping patterns, trying different exercises, trying different stretching, talking to someone in Chinese medicine, talking to a freaking shaman, you know, there's a lot of other places to get good information of how to prevent illness and to keep yourself healthy. And that is our personal responsibility. It's nobody else's. And so I take that pretty seriously and I own my health. I do own my health today. And I was in charge. They were serving me. And there are some things I had great care overall, the overall, the actual hands-on person-to-person, face-to-face care was great. Phone triage and follow-up on phone, not so great. Uh, there was a couple glitches when it came to discharge and medications and boy, they just don't like it at all when you question their authority and say, no, that's not working for me and you need to attend to this. But overall, I was treated with respect. Uh, I was acknowledged that I was advocating for my own health and that I had very specific, I have a very specific diet and some of the stuff they said that I should eat, I said, I can't. I can't eat those things, so we'll have to figure something else out. And I I didn't leave it up to them to figure it out. I figured it out. And then I asked if they could help me with it. And while I was in the hospital, they did help me with it. Now, did I have the same opportunity that everyone else had with the same amount of choices? No, I didn't. And I'm not going to fuss about that. Because I know the world can't adapt to every single one of my little things that make my life comfortable. That's up to me to do. You know, I, yes, if it was a major thing that, that there was no other avenue and I was going to be dealing with it daily, it'd be a different situation. But a few days in a hospital of having a limited diet because of my food allergies, I'm not going to make a big fuss about that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I go about life a lot different today. I have a lot of different philosophies than I had seven years ago. I have a lot of different perceptions and understandings and I see through things from the past and things currently from a much different uh, ground that I stand on. I no longer am standing in fear. I no longer stand feeling less than. I no longer stand feeling unworthy. I no longer own any of the the gaslighting or the scapegoating or anything that was tossed my way through all the things that I went through for years and years both with medication and with mental health issues um I have let go of so much stuff I forgive people are there people I don't want in my life because I know that they just are unhealthy and they aren't doing anything to do anything different. And they only point fingers and never look in the mirror. Those aren't my people anymore. I have a good tribe. And I've nurtured it. And and there are people that have been in my past that sadly they can't be in my life anymore. Because they just don't fit. And they're not fitting would be one thing. But their way of 
operating in life would be hurtful to me and I don't allow that in my life anymore. I just don't. I don't have time or energy for added stress. I don't have time or energy for for any drama. I just, I don't. <laughs> so anyway, I just thought I'd do an update of where I am seven years after abruptly stopping benzodiazepines as well as many other coming January 1st it'll be seven years off ev no seven years no will that be seven no it'll be six years off everything on January 1st six years will be everything's been gone out of my life for regular me I mean the only times I've had medicine I have been like when I've had to go to the emergency room or when I had COVID and I took a steroid for a few days that's 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 the only medications other than an occasional Tylenol I've had. Um, so I, I think that I'm a good example of our bodies do heal. Things that bothered us seven and ten years ago don't necessarily bother us as we heal and change and morph. Everything changes and our bodies do change and and even like with allergies, they change, you know, things change. So don't think anything is permanent and that you're stuck and that it's never going to change. It's always going to change, especially if you allow the changes that need to happen and it can get a lot, lot better, but you got to put effort into it. You got to make choices. And when something isn't working, do something different, even if it's uncomfortable. I've sat in a lot of uncomfortability over the last seven years. I've been really uncomfortable and very scared at times, but I have boldly tried new things to find a new way of living with what I was dealt with for all those years. So that's it. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks for checking in. And uh, I just send my deepest regards. If you're struggling right now, I'm sorry. It's it, it 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 maybe I'll do another video down the road. I've I I've, I've gone long enough, but talking about some tips and tricks of things that can help pass the time and choices you can make for yourself. But everybody's going to be different. What has worked for me might not work for someone else. There are ba basic tenets though that will work for everybody as far as eating very well and drinking plenty of fluids and getting fresh air outside. Go get that sun on your face. That helps set your sleep system. There's there's things. So healing isn't passive. You got to get busy. All right. And keep the thinking positive. Keep it thinking about love and kindness and peace and getting along and working through it and forgiving. Because if you stay angry, it, it, it makes the symptoms worse. I have learned that for sure. Anyway, love y'all. Peace.